I'm a singer-songwriter from Six Nations and I've been writing songs about my experience and with that being said it's helped me hold hope in my heart in following my dreams and being resilient to everyday Indigenous battles. Competition between spirit, earth and wind, let me tell you now. This song in particular, The Shiner, is a special song that I wrote for my grandfather. He was a snow snake maker, and that is a Haudenosaunee winter sport. It's my job to educate and to share, and the music allows me to do that. He'll be shining snow snakes and mud cats to the end of his days. My name is Chase Nicholas. I am a Mi'kmaq hockey player. Growing up, I always remember my family talking about the Mi'kmaq as the creators of the game of hockey. In grade 7, I did research on Mi'kmaq hockey sticks as the first sticks of the NHL. I found a Mi'kmaq hockey stick made in 1917, the same year the NHL was formed. I was surprised to find out the very stick I was holding was made by my great-great-grandfather, Alexander Cope. In 1934, an elder known as Old Joe Cope wrote a letter to the Halifax Herald claiming the Mi'kmaq created hockey. I found out later that I am a direct descendant of Old Joe Cope. There was a time when Mi'kmaq children were torn from their families and not allowed to speak their language, losing their words and stories. But the stories are coming back to us. Stepping on the ice, I take pride knowing the roots of the game of hockey stem from my ancestors in the Mi'kmaq Nation. I'm Sherry Lawson, host of Indigenous Voices. We're still here. Today, my special guest is Joe Valier, who is a lifelong member of the Chippewas of Rama First Nation, but he also has a couple of side gigs, too. Hello, Joe. Honey and Sherry, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for uh, joining us today. First of all, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself in whatever way you think is proper. Yeah, all right. Honey, you know, uh, Joe Valier, Indigenous Cause, Ram and Donjibwa. Uh, my name is Joe, Joe Valier. I'm from Rama. And um, yeah, uh, considering this is kind of a local show, uh, some of you might already know me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have several children, don't you, Joe? We're blessed with uh, four daughters, and we finally got our son fifth time around. Yay, me. <laughs> yeah, you had to keep going. You might have had a whole baseball team. Now, <laughs> I was going for a lacrosse team, but yeah, baseball is <laughs> fun enough as well. <laughs> you have a, a totally separate day job, don't you? Tell us about that. Funny, I'm a career flight fighter now. Um, uh, just because of the COVID, uh, things got held up a little bit. So, yeah, I'm a little bit better than 20 years on the job. Um, working for Rama since uh, 2002, I believe. 2002, sorry, is when I got on with the fire department. 2000s when I started with Rama. I was originally a plumber, and um, I found my way in the fire service. So, yeah, um, now I'm running in when everybody else is running out. <laughs> now, I have you on today to talk about something you're doing on the side, which has to do with lacrosse sticks. First of all, for our viewers who may have no clue about lacrosse, other than they carry a wooden stick and run around after each other and don't have much padding on, tell us about lacrosse in general, Joe. Uh, geez, um, I could go on for hours. I know we don't have that kind of time, but uh, the original the original field game is definitely uh, different than um, the the style of lacrosse I grew up playing. I, I grew up as a box player playing for Aurelia, um, representing the Sunshine City. And uh, nowadays I play play for the Huntsville Hawks on the Masters team. And uh, the odd time I'm lucky enough uh, to have the have the good fortune to be able to run fellows from Six Nations uh, in some of their tournaments that they go to down south. The original form of the game, could be hundreds, hundreds of people uh, from different communities out on the field at one time uh, playing for uh, sports, be able to celebrate or um, 
solve disputes, uh, get uh, get some of their younger fellows uh, ready for some upcoming hunts and, and wars and things like that. But uh, most of all, it's just it, it's a game that was given to us by the creator, and so and definitely good medicine for everybody involved and the people that uh, you know the players players in general. They uh, they tend to play for people that don't have the ability to play and people that need the medicine as well. Thank you. Um, you know, a hundred years ago when I did my anthropology degree, I wrote an article on lacrosse and I think it was called something like lacrosse, a thousand men aside. And my research showed that the Mohawks in particular used to play it for days and that the women stood on the sidelines and their job was to sew people up when they got cut open playing lacrosse. It was pretty rough. And very, you know, no pads whatsoever. Do you know, Joe, the origin of why in English the lacrosse stick is called lacrosse? Do you know where that comes from? Right off the get-go, lacrosse, it's got three different forms of sticks. That uh, There's no real evolution to the stick, so to speak, in, re in regards to the difference of the sticks. But um, the lacrosse stick that everybody might recognize, here's just a small one here. This is the first one I made for my son Carter, but... Um, you can just tell by the bend of it, and uh, it wasn't shaped similar to the uh, to the bishop's La Crozier, but uh, that's basically where where the name lacrosse came from. Now uh, that's how that's how everybody recognizes it. So everybody, you know, that uh, that came over as settlers, they they seen the lacrosse sticks and they they found that resemblance. So they dubbed the dubbed the game lacrosse. Yeah, and I was I was told by a very old man one time that if you hold the old sticks up they do look like a bit of a cross as well too if they weren't perfectly made and so it was yet another way that the uh, settlers could say oh look at those poor heathens they're playing with crosses they don't even know <laughs> so it got kind of a wrap at that time so I know that you have started making lacrosse sticks tell us how all that happened and and just why well, when I first started playing lacrosse, um, I, I started playing in the early 80s. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to grow up in a time where wood sticks were still still the norm. Um, so, it, yeah, it just um, it kind of takes me back to my roots, uh, so to speak, in regards to the game itself. I was fortunate enough. My wife, she was in Aquasasne for, uh, for a conference for work. And, yeah, unbeknownst to me, she gifted uh, brought, home, brought home a wood lacrosse stick for me, which uh, really fueled my fueled my passion my love for the wood stick again at that point I only had one stick left over from that's the last one my dad ever bought me uh it was never ever game used um but that one right now it's in the in the midst of being turned into an urn so I can uh you know uh, decorate my wall um you know and represent my dad in a good way but uh it, it's a passion I started out with um rehabbing we'll say um some old lacrosse sticks that I was able to find uh, through garage sales antiques shops things like that uh, and some sticks just found their way to my door doorstep but um i put put some time and effort into doing that and just like the game itself i i always wanted to be on the floor so evolution uh, so to speak it um i had to put my time in um and doing that and, and practicing so just like the way i used to practice and, and the way i used to love playing with my old sticks back in the day i just i was looking for that next step to be to be relevant to the game and and to take me further and to allow me to do more things with the game. So I went from stringing old sticks, uh, bringing the old sticks back to life to taking the next step and, and starting to bend my own. Joe, tell us the process of your starting from nothing. You're going to make a stick. How does that happen? Well, first off, I need a nice sunny day. <laughs> Definitely some time off work and, and a little bit of time away from my uh, mid full of kids, but uh, they're all uh, pretty supportive of me. So I'm fortunate enough to live um, right along an old rail line here in Rama. And um, I go out into the bush and uh, I find find the second best tree in the bush. Um, and that way the strongest one survives. Uh, I put my offering down. I take the tree down. And uh, it, that's time for the hard work to begin. Uh, I split the, uh, split the tree lengthwise. And uh, for the sticks I'm making nowadays, which I'll show you here shortly, but um, usually for, for this style of stick here, I can take the tree and then split it into eights, and that's what I need after a little bit more carving. Uh, put it in the steamer, bend it around, uh, let Mother Nature take her course and season up that stick, and then time to carve after that. Once it's carved, drill some holes in them and string away. And, yeah, all of a sudden a new stick is born. So if you had 
a whole day and your plan today is to make a stick, you're going out in the bush, how long before you've actually got one ready to go and be used? Well, um, that's the thing. Uh, this style of stick here, uh, which is one, you know, most people recognize uh, that that one's going to take me. I, I could probably put about 15 man hours into that stick. Um, that's right from taking the tree down and bringing it out of the bush. The seasoning time that uh, Mother Nature has to put into that tree, she's going to add another 10 months onto that. So, but with the sticks that I make nowadays, which are these ones here, Great Lake style stick, um, I can drop a tree and have this one bent uh, as long as I can shave uh, fast enough. I can I can drop a tree and go through the process right down to shaving and have that bent uh, and ready to go, strung up uh, about three days. Okay, so this this is not something you do on one day off. One day off, one stick doesn't work like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so what kind of trees are we talking about? Will anyone do? Um, I've, I've heard of many people, uh, many people throw out, um, ideas, you know, in regards to some different woods, uh, these, these sticks here, uh, typically, um, they're made out of hickory. Unfortunately, in our area of Ontario, we don't have hickory trees here. So, uh, I use the next best thing. Um, I try and use white ash when I'm making this style of stick and I use black ash when I'm making the Great Lakes style sticks. Um, black ash, it's, uh, it, it seems to be a little bit more more forgiving and, and more, more readily uh, wanting to become a lacrosse stick, so to speak. So yeah, black ash is, is the way to, is the tree of my choice right now. So as long as I can beat the beetles to them, I, I figure I'm doing them justice. And we've got a lot of black ash still around uh, Rama. That was the wood of choice where they used to make the old baskets too, right? Yes. Yes, we do. Um, actually, I was just out the other day. I have another project on the go in regards to uh, making a new Eagle Staff for the community. And uh, I, I came across another grove of uh, black ash. And um, going back to some of the old boys, uh, we're looking at maybe 30 years, 30 years or better since the last basket was made here in Rama. So, yeah, I'm trying to trying to bring that back as well. So. so you know now where this black ash grove is, but you can't tell us because you'd have to kill us, right? <laughs> I, I say that to a lot of people that, uh, you know, I, 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 I could take it back there, but I'll take it back blindfolded. <laughs> you have some samples to show us here because I know our, uh, the people at home just have a probably very general idea of la what lacrosse is. And I didn't even know that there was master lacrosse teams still playing. And I like to think I know what's going on. Um, aside from the uh, round one you showed us and the little one that you made for your boy, do you have any more with you there to show us? Um, yeah, I do actually. This one here is the uh, the first uh, long stick style. Um, you know, every every stick. Well, there's like I mentioned earlier, there's there's three different brands of lacrosse, so to speak. Um, there's a long stick style. Uh, there's the Great Lake style, like this one. And unfortunately, I don't have. Uh, anything in my collection yet in in uh from the two stick game society doesn't allow it to be played the way it used to be uh it was it was definitely a rough game back then uh shorter sticks um and yeah they're, they're using walnuts for balls so to speak uh, pecan nuts and things like that so that that was a pretty rough game but all of, all of them were at one point the tupperware sticks that's what i like to call them the plastic sticks uh pretty much any big sporting company uh you know the big name brands they're all selling their own uh, stuff as well too trying to grab a piece of the pie so to speak but in my mind, uh, the world's better with, with lacrosse sticks, and um, I'm trying my best to uh, to carry them on and and to make sure that uh, it's it's not not going to be a lost lost art. So, like I mentioned earlier as well, too, I'm just waiting for my son to grow up, and he's only five now. And don't they or haven't they also made uh, aluminum sticks? Well, not aluminum per se. Uh, that's more the shaft when you when you start looking at the sticks of today. Uh, the, the heads are typically made of Tupperware, uh, plastic again, sorry, but uh, yeah, the shafts, you can get them to uh, use with those sticks. You can use anything from a wood shaft to to a aluminum shaft, which some of the younger kids use. Yeah, they don't stand up to the game very well, depending on how you play. <laughs> but you can get everything from carbon fiber to, uh, to just about any any type of material now to make a shaft with, so... Okay, so do the sticks come in different lengths? Is it like a hockey stick and it has to kind of match your arm length and your body? I can stand stand upright and, and have that stick beside me and I don't have to really bend bend over to pick the ball up off the ground. Um, the, the sticks of today that are used in today's game, the modern game, uh, both box and, and field lacrosse, uh, depending on your age group, um, 
you have different measurements that you have to have to live by, so to speak, um, and you know to be able to keep the keep within the rules. But uh, we we don't have a stick, you know, any measurement limits in our game. So uh, in the Masters game, um, but in in the uh, competitive loops, still, uh, yeah, there's there's rules that govern every part of the game, right down to the equipment you wear, to the uh, to the dimensions of your stick, even right down to some of the guys are pinching their plastic sticks nowadays, uh, more for the box game as opposed to field. There's always a, a minus, you know, you might be able to shoot a little bit better with a pinch stick, but yeah, it's going to make it that much harder to catch as well too. So. Hey, so tell us how you, Joe Val, you're living in, Tur- in uh, Rama, firefighter, figured out how to make these. It almost sounds corny. I, I'm part of a Facebook group as well uh, in regards to the wood sticks. Uh, a lot of a lot of lovers out there still uh, looking looking for wood sticks and, and, you know, just lovers of the wood stick. But I, I put a post on there one time in regards to, you know, um, I, just something I wanted to do. And it wasn't my choice. It was it was a choice of stick makers that have passed on now and started their journey into the spirit world. So um, obviously, uh, yourself as well as myself um you know our culture um you know and uh, stuff like that really resonates and maybe it wasn't my choice uh, you know maybe it was maybe it was somebody somebody different uh, you know like i said some of the other stick makers from the past i think back to these stick makers uh, some of them I, I had the opportunity to meet uh, that are still alive obviously uh, the ones that have passed on and unfortunately you know all i have is their their sticks to be able to um kind of live vicariously through if you will so but yeah, it, it, it just, for me, lacrosse has been a passion throughout my whole life. Uh, I have tattoos of lacrosse sticks on me and just lacrosse was my first love, my first passion. So yeah, I'm um, just wanting to stay, stay relevant to the game and, and keep, keep proficient at it and keep my skills up in regards to uh, the more I work with a stick, the better off I am. I, I try and preach that to the young kids nowadays, uh, especially over here in Rama. I'd, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see our community have our own team one day, but uh you know, I still sleep with my sticks. <laughs> this one here is from uh, Alfred Jocks, made by Alfred Jocks at Don and Daga. Um, some some say he's the premier stick maker left in the world, and uh, I'm I'm right along there with them. I agree, but there there's some other great ones out there as well too. Uh, Lewis Mitchell being one out of Aquasasni, uh, Jack Johnson. Well, I'll be sure and not tell Jody, your wife, of many years that. Lacrosse is still your first love. Hopefully, she never sees this. Oh, she knows. She knows that I was fortunate enough to uh, through my social media accounts and stuff like that. Hence, uh, hence Nishlax. That's my Instagram handle. Sorry if I'm uh, throwing the plug in there, but um, okay. yeah. So I had a film crew out here, and um, that's one of the questions that were asked. You know, um, how how did me and lacrosse come together? And uh, that's that's the best way I can explain it. it. It was the one thing that I was able to pick up and was gifted to me that uh, everybody seems to have something. But, uh, you know, lacrosse, lacrosse for me, it was that something. And, of course, my wife nowadays. But uh, I have more time in lacrosse than my wife, I think. <laughs> Do any of your girls play the game? Uh, every one of my kids have played at one point. Um as of late, uh, both uh, well, my youngest two, uh, my youngest daughter Kenley and my uh, my son. I'm really hoping that they fall in love with it as well. Uh, it, just by the look on their faces, it looked like they were more playing for the slushies at the end of the game this year. And uh, same with my other daughter Tasha when she last played, uh, you know, before COVID. So they all seem to uh, they all seem to really enjoy it, and they all have their sticks laying around the house and things like that, and in, in the in the spots to where our sticks are supposed to be, but. There's not very many rooms in my house that I don't have a lacrosse stick in. <laughs> There's uh, probably a YouTube video on how to make a lacrosse stick. I can imagine people sitting at home watching this saying, hey, I could probably do that or I'd like to see how that goes. But you're telling us that this is a long process. You have to have the right mindset to do it. You have to do the ceremony. You have to give thanks. Am I right in all that? Yeah, there's uh, there's definitely some, um, there's definitely videos out there but um you know i also had the good fortune of being able to travel to aquasauce and meet a couple other stick makers uh one of them being lewis mitchell another one being evan cree at uh, the traditional lacrosse and um they showed me a few things but um being from here in rama uh you know i just kind of i just kind of went with it i, I was able to uh, meet elfie jocks himself uh, one time uh, not far away from here at another stick stick festival so to speak and uh just uh, I, I picked away at him and got some ideas and 
at the end of it, uh, what he told me, I asked him a question, upright was, you know, what's the best way for me to be able to get started uh, making my own sticks? And his answer, it, it was pretty blunt. He, he told me to just get started. And that's what I had done. And, uh, you know. So do people call you and say, can you make me a stick? I, and- I get calls like that quite often. And, um, yeah, right now I have a fairly lengthy list. Um, I have sticks right now that are living in other homes that adopted out um, everywhere. You know, uh, we're stretching across Turtle Island nowadays. Uh, some people, well, we know it as Turtle Island. Uh, most people know it as North America. But I also have um, clients that are, are still in waiting. There's still a demand for wood sticks. And so long as there's a demand, uh, you know, guys like myself, we're going to keep making them. Right. Now, I I know that when I went to school long ago and we talked about lacrosse, uh, I remember I had uh, one instructor who said lacrosse is Canada's national sport. There, there will be people who tell you it's hockey, but that's not the case. It actually is our national sport and should have been put on all the emblems for Ontario and Canada. So would you agree with that? Yeah, um, lacrosse is definitely our national sport. Uh, nowadays, I think they've... Uh, um, well, we'll just say the government. <laughs> I think the government has finally uh, tried to stem that argument, so to speak, in regards to, you know what, okay, uh, lacrosse is now our, our official uh, summer sport and, and hockey takes over in the wintertime. But uh, all, the, all the years I played lacrosse and, and still playing at, uh, at my age of 45 years old, um, I've never, ever been seriously hurt playing lacrosse. So, uh, and like I said, lacrosse for me is my first love. It's, it's my first crush and my you know one of the biggest passions in life so i don't i don't really uh i don't really uh pay a homage if you will to uh to the hockey side of you know being canada's national sport i'm glad you're still uh playing you're being an example to everybody out there that but i would expect that you're not very tall and you're fast that's why you're good at lacrosse would you agree with that <laughs> I, I i stand about five three um i play with the uh, with the you know, with the mindset of a six, six footer, um, you know, like I said earlier, uh, I, I grew up playing box lacrosse. So not that I go out and, and try to, uh, try to goon it up and things like that. Uh, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's survival of the fittest when it comes to lacrosse, any sport for that matter, you know, if you want to play and you want to be proficient, you find, find ways. So like I mentioned earlier as well, too, uh, answering one of your questions, I spend a lot of time, spend a lot of time with my lacrosse sticks, um, teach myself how to shoot backhand, underhand, um, around the world. Some of the new kids call it, uh, but anything that could keep me on the floor. So play defense, forward, uh, power play, shorthanded, anything that could keep me on the floor. That's where I wanted to be and whatever I had to do to put my work in, I, I done it. So. Okay, so I want you to look at Joe into the future. Uh, seven, ten years further than that, what's going to happen to lacrosse in this country, in this area? Um, right now, there seems to be a, a really big boom, which I, I appreciate uh, in regards to paying roots, roots to the game. Um, lacrosse right now, uh, they're, they're changing up a little bit, but it, it's getting ready to enter into the Olympics. Um, you know, there's there's world championships every year nowadays for, um, sorry, not every year, but um you know, uh, every couple of years in regards to uh, a, a box lacrosse, so they have both men's and women's, they have uh, um, junior junior categories as well. So the game is definitely growing, um, you know, especially nowadays, uh, being here from Rama softball, uh, fastball has always been, been a major, uh, uh, you know, major pastime, but um, nowadays fastball is starting to die off. So especially here in Rama now, it's my opportunity to really seize the moment and, and make sure I, I do what I can. So the big momentum nowadays is grow the game. And there's guys like me and, and, and more so all across, you know, uh, all across North America and, and, and f- further than that, um, you know, countries all over the world now starting to push this game. And, you know, I know of uh, teams over in Uganda, I've taken my lacrosse sticks on vacation with me to Jamaica. They have a national field team over there and some of them never, ever seen a wood stick. So yeah, we're, we're doing our best at, Everybody that plays uh, at any level, the, you know, um, some of the older guys always preach to the younger kids, just be a good ambassador to the game, grow the game. You know, we want it to be around forever. So, and it's, it's so far, it's been standing the test of time. It's older than hockey. <laughs> we should, as basic citizens, uh, ask our sporting people and ask our educators to think about adding lacrosse to their list. Um, you know what? I, had we had lacrosse back in my day, it a lot better. Maybe I'd be a, a, you know, a doctor nowadays as opposed to a, a crazy firefighter. <laughs> but um, no, I, 
I can't stress it enough. Nowadays, uh, they have some uh, lacrosse going on in uh, at, at local high schools and things like that, competing against high schools throughout Simcoe County, um, more so field lacrosse as opposed to box lacrosse. Um, I, I lean more towards the box lacrosse game, but it takes a whole community to be able to uh, plant that seed. Everybody who's watching this needs to get out there and try to see a live game, not just one on TV or maybe even one on YouTube from Uganda. Who knows? Joe, yeah. I want very much for being on this uh, show today. I think you've shone a spotlight on something that most Canadians know nothing about and know that it is the creator's game. Kachimi Gretsch, Joe, for being here. Uh, everybody out there, get out to a lacrosse game. Support it. Let it grow. Gretsch. <laughs>